Hi, and welcome back to this section, higher order functions, functions as arguments and return values. Now, what are we going to learn in this section? First, in this video, we're going to take a look at functions as arguments that are passed to other functions. Then we're briefly going to consider nested functions, which are functions that are defined inside the body of another function. Before we're going to move on to functions that are returned as return values from other functions. We're also going to take a look at the operator module, which is very important because it offers many of the standard operators that are normally part of the Python syntax, such as the addition, right? Which is part of the Python syntax as a plus. It offers many of those operators as regular functions. Then we're going to look at decorators, which are a particular kind of higher order function implemented in a very Pythonic way. And finally, we're going to take a look at decorators that accept arguments or keywords themselves, which are a particularly complicated case of regular decorators. But let's start with the video passing a function as an argument to another function. What are we going to cover in this video? We'll start by considering what a higher order function is. And we're also going to consider the fact that in Python, functions are simply objects, just like almost anything in Python is an object. Now, what is a higher order function? A higher order function is quite simply any function that operates on other function, right? So whereas a normal function might operate on integers or strings or anything like that, a higher order function operates on other functions. To understand higher order functions, it's very important to realize that in Python, almost everything is an object, right? A string is an object, an integer is an object, and also a function is an object. And because a function is an object, it can be passed as an argument to another function, just like an int or a string can be passed to as an argument to a function. So let's take a look at a practical example. And what we're going to start with is the, the good old factorial function, which we've seen before, right here defined as a lambda function. So just to remind you that factorial function implements the factorial operation. And the factorial of three is six because three times two times one is six. Right, so that's simply what this function does. Now, this function obviously takes a little bit of time to execute, right? Like any other function. And say that we want to time how long it takes. How can we do that? Well, the procedural way to do this is very simple. We simply import a time module. Then we say, okay, t0, so the start time is time.time, .time, right? Time.time .time returns timestamp in seconds. Then we call the factorial function with a pretty high value, otherwise it takes almost no time. And then we say t1 is time dot time and then to find out how long it took we simply say okay it took up dot 5f seconds and then we print out the difference between t1 and t0 right because the difference between t1 the after time and the before time is the time it took to execute l factorial with a, an argument 900 if i do this it's you see it takes almost no time right 11 milliseconds in this case now this works and it's quite nice and I do this all the time, but it's a very procedural line by line approach, right? So can we do this more functionally? Well, we can. We can do this using a higher order function. And the higher order function that we're going to implement here is a timer function. Now, what does the timer function do? Well, it is a function that as a first argument accepts another function. In this case, obviously that other function is going to be our L factorial lambda function, but it could be any function. And we call it FNC for fun. And then it takes an argument, and that argument is the argument that we're going to pass onto FNC. Now, and then inside our timer function, we do pretty much the same thing that we did before. I'll just copy paste it. I'll up. Namely, we register the before time, T0. Then we call not L factorial, but we call FNC. And we don't call it with a fixed value of 900, but we call it with arg, right? And then we get the after time and we return as a return value T1 minus T0. In other words, the logic is very similar, but now we can time any function with any argument. And if we call it, I can say hup, print, it took timer L factorial 900. And if I execute this, you see it took in this case seven milliseconds, right? Very similar to here. So this is a perfectly equivalent, perfectly valid way to implement a timer. And what we've shown here almost trivially, I would say, is that you can pass a function, in this case, L factorial, as an argument to another function. And then inside that function here, we have accepted FNC func as our argument. 
And then we can simply call it with arg, which we've passed as the second argument here, right? So passing arguments as functions to other arguments is really very easy. And timer in this case is a very simple example of a higher order function. You can do very complicated things with higher order functions, but as you can see from this example, not all higher order functions necessarily have to be complicated. This is a very simple example. What I want to do now is just because I think you're in, at this point of the course, you're, you're ready for this. I want to show you how you can implement this timer function with only Lambda function. And that's actually not that easy, right? Because if you take a look at the timer function, you see that inside it's still pretty procedural because we have a line that gets the before time. Then we have another line that calls the function. And then we have a third line that gets the after time, right? So there's a very procedural line by line approach. So can we make this 100% functional? Yes, we can, but you need to hold on to your helmets as they say, because it's pretty complicated. But let's take a look. What we're going to do first is say L timestamp is, and it's a Lambda function. And what this Lambda function needs to do is get the before and after timestamps of a function. So as a first argument gets FNC, the function, as the second argument, it takes the argument to be passed onto FNC, right? So you see that structurally it's very similar to our timer function. And then what it does is it calls time.time, .time, then says func arg, and then calls time.time .time again. And it returns the whole thing as a tuple of a before time, the return value of FNC arg, and an after time, right? Now, why do you get a before and an after time in this case? Well, simply because a, a tuple is evaluated from, from left to right, right? So first this is evaluated, gets the before time, then func arg is evaluated, right? And the, the function is executed, and then time.time .time is evaluated and we get the after time. Now, then we need another lambda function, ldiff, and I call this lambda. And what ldiff takes is essentially the output of L timestamp. So it, as the first argument, it gets t0, then it gets the return value from func arg, and then it gets the after timestamp, t1. And what it simply does, as the name suggests, it gets, takes the difference between t1 and t0, right? So it returns the time it took to execute func arg, essentially. And then we need yet a third lambda function, l timer. And what does this do? Well, it accepts a function, the function to time. It accepts an argument to that function. Then it calls ldiff. And what does it pass onto ldiff? Well, l timestamp, and l timestamp gets the function and the argument. This is not going to work because this returns a tuple, right? Whereas l diff doesn't expect a tuple, but it expects three separate arguments. So we need to unpack it with a star, the syntax that you may be familiar with in Python, star unpacking. And then we have our function. Now, just to show you that it works, we can say took 5f seconds. And then we say L timer. And then as the first argument, we pass L factorial. And as the second argument, again, 900. And then let's execute it and hope that it works. There we go. And you see, it took six and a half milliseconds. So again, very similar to our previous time. Now, this is a very complicated, interlocked, interweaved set of three Lambda functions. I'm not going to explain them in more detail here, but I invite you as an exercise, and I think that's a very useful exercise, to pause the video or to view it back and to go through each of these functions and see how they together accomplish exactly the same thing as this timer function right here. Because it's a good training in a kind of a functional way of thinking. I'm not necessarily going to say that this is a very useful example because it's quite a complicated solution to something that we did in a much more simpler way here. But if you understand it, it's a very good way of training yourself in thinking in a functional programming kind of way.